Okay, this, in this video we're going to look at when to use the x equals vi plus vf over 2 times t equation. And x is displacement, vi is initial velocity, vf is final velocity, and t is time. We have no acceleration, that'd be one thing, is we wouldn't want to know acceleration, and we, wouldn't, we really probably wouldn't have acceleration as one of our givens. And where this comes from is there's two equations on our equation sheet v equals x over t, which is a standard velocity equation. But then there's also an average velocity equa equation when there's acceleration going on. You're going from initial velocity to final velocity at a constant rate. Um, you can kind of cut down the, that middle, down the middle, and you can pretend like it's a, a, just a constant velocity right down the middle. That's what this equation pretty much does. Well, we can take that and we can rearrange this to the v equals x over t to v equals v average over t. At that point in time, we can go ahead and substitute that in, and that results in this equation that is derived. So if you don't have this on your equation sheet, you can put it together from two other equations. Okay, so let's take a look at it, and let's use it. A car accelerates from an initial velocity of 16.5 meters per second to a final velocity of 38.1 meters per second. And it takes 2.47 seconds. How far did he travel in that 2.47 seconds? So there's our equation. X equals VI plus VF over 2 times t. Be careful, there's some equations that have a negative here, a different equation, not this one. And so we get vi is 16.5 plus vf is 38.1 over 2. And we're going to multiply that by 2.47. And when you do that, it's 16.5 plus 38.1 equals 54.6. Divide that by 2 times 2.47. And I get x equals 67.4 meters. If the unit for displacement is going to be meters, and I don't know the actual direction, so it would be forwards if they want the vector displacement instead of just the distance. Okay, so let's rearrange this equation for a couple things. If I was rearranging this equation for vi, first thing I'd have to do is divide up the t from both sides. That's going to get rid of this t. At that point in time, I would multiply out the 2. Multiply out the 2, that gets rid of this. And then I have 2x over t equals vi plus vf. And at that point in time, I'm just going to have to subtract the other one that I don't want. So in this case, minus vf, and it would be 2x over t minus vf equals vi. So vi equals vi equals... 2x over t minus vf. If I was going to solve for vf, it'd be very similar. You need to go back and look at this one. So if I was solving for vf, I would get to this point. So I'd, I'd divide out the t, divide out the t, and then I would go ahead and multiply out the 2, multiply out the 2, get rid of that, and so 2x over t equals vi plus vf. That was the same place we were before, but now I'm going to subtract out the vi instead. So minus vi, and I get 2x over t minus vi over here, and that is going to equal to the vf. I just wrote it on the other side. So we take a look. Very similar. 2x over t minus vf would equal to vi, or 2x over t minus vi equals to vf. It's practically the same algebra for those two. Now, if I want to rearrange this for t, this is practically there. Um, I could go ahead and, at this point in time, I can divide x by, just take this whole thing and divide both sides by it. So vi plus vf over 2, and I have vi plus vf over 2, so I do that same thing to this side. And that would get rid of this whole thing, and t is going to be equal to x over vi plus vf over 2, but sometimes this looks a little ugly, so you might, might want to take this. And you could have done it before, you could have multiplied both sides by 2 and got rid of that there and got it up here in the first place. 
might be a little prettier to look at. 2x equals vi plus vf. And there you go. That's your, that's your t.